Assalamualaikum and hi boys and girls. So we're going to start our lesson with theme 1, maintenance and continuity of life. In chapter 1, which is uh, stimuli and responses, we're going to start with uh, subtopic 1.1, human nervous system. In this subtopic, you're going to learn the structure of the human nervous system, the function of the human nervous system, difference between voluntary action and involuntary action, and the importance of the network of human nervous system in daily life. Let's take a look. Look at the diagram. In a game of badminton, the movement of the shuttlecock serves as the stimulus that is detected by the eye. An impulse is triggered and sent to the brain. Next, the brain interprets the impulse, estimates the speed of the shuttlecock, and determines the direction and the pattern of body movement. So, what do you think is the next step? Yes, the brain then sends impulses to the hand and leg muscles to respond. This will cause the leg to step forward and the hand to move the racket towards the direction of the shuttlecock. Okay, so this is just an example that shows how human nervous system works. Other than sight, thinking and body movement, the human nervous system also controls and coordinates organ functions in the body and maintains a balanced internal environment. Next is the structure of the human nervous system. The human nervous system consists of brain, spinal cord, and peripheral nerves. Brain and spinal cord work together in central nervous system, while cranial nerves and spinal nerves will work together in peripheral nervous system. In the peripheral nervous system, there are 12 pairs of cranial nerves connecting the brain to the sensory and internal organs and 31 pairs of spinal nerves connecting the spinal cord to the skeletal muscle. Now, let's look at the functions of the human nervous system. The human nervous system controls and coordinates organs and parts of the body. It detects stimuli, send information in the form of impulses, interpret impulses and produces appropriate responses. For your information, a stimulus is any change that happens around us, while the action of the organism towards the stimulus is known as a response. The figure shows the pathway of the nervous impulses in the human nervous system to produce a response. First, the stimulus is detected by the receptor. Okay, receptor is also known as a factor. Okay, and then the receptor will send the nerve impulses to the central nervous system. It will receive and interpret the nerve impulse and send it to the effector. Then the effector will produce response which is the action done by the body. Okay, so the responses of the human body to stimuli can be divided into voluntary actions and involuntary actions. So look at the examples below. We have a boy reading a book, the process of withdrawing hand from a hot object, and process of peristalsis in esophagus. So which response is a voluntary action and which is an involuntary action? Okay, so the voluntary actions is actions made in consciousness and under the control of the person's will. This action involves the control of the brain. Okay, for examples, uh, writing, dancing, speaking, riding a bike, kicking a ball, and swimming. So the keyword for voluntary actions are consciousness under the control, and it involves the control of the brain. Okay, let's look at the pathway of impulses for voluntary actions. For example, the stimulus is the light from the object enters the eye and then it goes to the receptor. The light receptors in the eye produces impulses and send it to the brain. The brain then interprets impulses and sends out the nerve impulse to the effector. 
the effector which is the skeletal muscles in the hand are then stimulated and produces response where the hand moves to right. For involuntary actions, okay, these are the actions that occur unconsciously and not under the control of the person's will. And this action is not controlled by the brain. Involuntary actions can be classified into two. The first one involving a medulla oblongata and then the second one involving spinal cord. The example of involuntary actions which involve medulla oblongata is heartbeat, breathing, peristalsis and secretion of saliva whereby the involuntary actions uh, involving spinal cord also known as the reflex actions the examples are withdrawing hand when it accidentally touches hot objects withdrawing foot when it accidentally step on a sharp object and sneezing when dust enters the nose okay so this is the pathway of impulses for involuntary actions so first for the stimulus hand accidentally touches a hot kettle and it sends the impulse to receptor where the heat receptor cells on the skin detect heat and then the information passes through the nerve cells in the spinal cord causing the skeletal muscle in the hand being stimulated and produce response where the hand is pulled away from the hot kettle these are the importance of voluntary and involuntary actions so for voluntary action, it allows us to conduct daily activities efficiently and smoothly and enables the body to react towards stimuli to do an action. For involuntary action, it helps us to avoid injury, detects uh, instability in the body and also getting enough rest. So we need to know the importance of the network of human nervous system in daily life. A damaged nervous system can cause temporarily, partially or completely paralyzed. For example, if the nerves in the muscle of a leg or hand are injured, the person will face difficulty in moving his leg or hand. In the case of a more serious problem, he might have to depend on machines to carry out his physiological processes such as breathing or heart beating. So remember to use and take good care of it. Okay, so we have finished uh, subtopic 1.1. So for exercise, I want you to answer formative practice 1.1 in your textbook. And you can get or find the answers from the textbook and also from this video. Okay, after you have completed your exercise, you can hand in to our Google Classroom. If you have any questions, so you can ask me or ask your friends and we can discuss it in our WhatsApp group. Okay boys and girls, thank you for watching. Hopefully this video has helped you to understand about the human nervous system. Don't forget to read about the next subtopic, stimuli and responses in humans. Bye! Assalamualaikum!